Over the past several months, we've had a number of significant Sunday feasts. Easter, we recall the Ascension of the Lord, which we celebrate on Sunday. Pentecost, last Sunday, Holy Trinity Sunday, and this Sunday, Corpus Christi, or the Solemnity of the Body and Blood of Christ. And this particular Sunday gives us the opportunity to reflect on Eucharist, the gift that the Lord makes of himself under the form of bread and wine, the gift of his own precious body and blood. And we commemorate this event by a, a public procession immediately following Mass, a sign of our love and devotion to our Lord under the form of bread in the Eucharist, and a sign of witness for the community that we are a worshiping community. Also affords us an opportunity to reflect on the, the Mass itself. And I think it's important for us to acknowledge what it is that we are doing here. If you ask most people, they would say Mass should be something entirely uplifting, lively, pleasant, and joyful. And there is truth to that. There's no question that we do rejoice in the gift of the Lord's body and blood for us. But any semblance of frivolity must absolutely be rejected. And under the guise of being fun and pleasant over the course of decades, a great deal of frivolity has been incorporated into the Mass itself. But let's stop and think about that first Mass, the Mass of, of the Lord's Supper. What was going on in the Lord's heart and mind on the course of that night? We hear the words clearly, this is my body which will be given up for you. He's predicting his death on the cross, his crucifixion. I'm sure that in his mind and heart, though he did that willingly, it was not a cause of exquisite joy and certainly not frivolity. And when he says, this is the chalice of my blood, which will be poured out for you, he was well aware of the blood that he was about to shed the very next day, both in the scourging, the crowning, the crucifixion, and even after his death, his being pierced in the side. These things the Lord carries in his heart. And in the course of that same meal, he says to his apostles, he says to, to them, one of you is about to betray me. And then he says to Peter, before this night is out, you will deny me three times. And no, Lord, that won't happen. And previously he had predicted to the apostles that the shepherd would be struck and all of the sheep would be scattered. And they all denied it. So the Lord carries in his heart not only the passion that he would undergo, but the rejection that he would experience from his own apostles. And he would already be hearing the echoes of the crucify him of all of the people who he had fed with the multitude of fish and bread. Crucify him. All of these things the Lord brings to that altar and pours into the words of consecration. This, this is my body. And certainly we want to receive the grace and gift of what the Lord won for us by his passion and death. But remember in the Mass, after the, after the consecration, we say we recall his passion, his death, and his resurrection. And very often we want to skip over the passion and death and say, isn't it great we're rejoicing in his resurrection? No. We have to go with the Lord in his passion and his death. And when we celebrate Mass, one of the crucial elements for the priest is to have a crucifix on the altar so that our focus is on the crucified Lord, so that we maintain a proper spirit of devotion, reverence, attention to the fact that we are recalling the passion and death of the Lord. When we receive our Lord, that's a great gift and it fills us with great joy. But when we properly reflect upon the Mass as the offering, 
and reenactment, making present again of his very passion and death. When we do that with the kind of attention and devotion that we are supposed to carry in our hearts, we cannot help but have our hearts expand with tremendous love for the Lord who is giving his life for us. And I guarantee you, if the apostles at the Last Supper had some sense of what the Lord was in fact saying to them about what would happen, their hearts would have been chastened and they would have been more deeply resolved to stand with the Lord and say, Lord, we will go with you even to the cross. And they would have. But, like us, they fail to recognize the greatness of the sacrifice the greatness of the gift. And so in failing to recognize often the greatness of the sacrifice and greatness of the gift, we fail to acknowledge the greatness of the Lord's love for us. And because we don't appreciate as much as we could or should the depth of the Lord's love for us, we do not love him as abundantly in return as we are called to do. So on this feast, beautiful feast of the Eucharist, the gift of the Lord to us and for us. Let us resolve in our hearts, as the people in the Old Testament said, which they said but didn't do, we will do and, and follow all that the Lord has commanded. But we know they didn't. Their love was weak. Perhaps our devotion today, our devotion to our Lord in the Eucharist, focused on his passion and death, and also on his ascension, resurrection and ascension, will so touch our hearts and deepen our love that we will say with greater resolve and greater resignation, Lord, all that you ask of us, we will do. For we know now, Lord, with certainty that you love us, and we strive and commit ourselves to love you in return.